Good morning everyone. My name is Alex Jordan. I'm from Slam 101.1 FM. I have the morning show which is 6 to 10 weekday mornings. Check us out online, slam101fm.com. Sometimes I get a good feeling. Yeah. Just assuming that people love Alex Jordan. Um, but I think that they would love a combination of things. You know, I think that they would love it. have a zest, like enjoy life. So I think there's a, something infectious about that energy. And I also think that I'm pretty predictable. I think once you know my personality, you, and anything happens, you know how it react to it. So I think there's something in, in, endearing about that. Tune after tune, back in the heads, man. You know what we do for a living. Who that stick balls? I know you wanna break it right <laughs> well now they're gonna know, thanks for that. But um, something that people don't know about Alex Jordan um, would be that I am equally wracked with insecurity like anyone else. You know, I uh, hate how I look in a lot of photographs. I succumb to a lot of my weaknesses even though I have good discipline in other areas of my life. So I think people would be surprised with that. Yours and your new product heel bag by the yo the way I run my zone. You be wishing for more two shots of patrol, we be hitting the flow. Radio broadcasters. I think that the most important quality is being good at being good. Because it's very hard. It's easy to be with you if you're with your friends or chilling or on, on the block lightning. But when people turn on the mic and say, be you now, that is a more of a challenge. So I find the best video announcers that are really comfortable being themselves. So it's good morning. Yeah, it's a great way to start the day. Slam 101. I hope you had a great time. We sure have. It's seven minutes now before 10 o'clock. Come and try. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. I enjoyed watching you down the street. Well, I would be a professional athlete. Um, probably a tennis player, but I, I wouldn't turn down football or any other major sport. And if I was not a professional athlete, I, I would be a teacher, I think. I would love to teach. I still haven't ruled out teaching. I have something special for you, Alex. Really? Oh, oh, oh yeah. no. Are you kidding me, Salt? Oh, y'all are kidding me. Oh, thank you very much. It's not the end of the Happy birthday to you. Oh, man. Thank you so much. We kept that one quiet last Friday. Thank you. I'm my manager, Future. Good morning, Dream Real. Thank you. What a beautiful cake. Instagram, please. So, Instagram. Um, the biggest misconception people have about me, I think, would be that they can look at me and judge who I am. I think that's extraordinarily, that's a real misconception because I, I am very much not like what I look like physically. Yeah, yoga. Well, I mean, I've always been an active person. I've done many sports and swimming and distance running and golf and squash, but really the practice of yoga, the word they use is asana, has really taught me the most. I think it's the fundamentals over which you can put anything. It's such a help for life because the idea is that nothing is quick or instant. It is constant and slow and that there's this idea of discipline. You know, coming to your mat when you don't want to, when you're hungry, <laughs> when you're tired, when you're fed up. Um, so it's been it's been such an eye opener. For me. I mean, how much time have you got? Young <laughs> listeners need so many messages because all the messaging in pop and reggae and soca is dubious. So they need lots of messaging. Women, young women need messaging that they are, their value is much more than how they look, right? They, they exist for more than being sexy, or help us. Um, for young men, um, my messaging would really surround self-worth. Really believing in yourself, confidence, shoulders back, knowing that you are the man. 
as opposed to feeling like no boy don't like you and then acting out. Confidence in men and more roundedness in women, boys and girls, would be my two messages. If you ever notice, most athletes in the world, no matter what sport they play, they also play golf. <laughs> it's an incredible game, mostly because there's so many things to think about and um, you have to try so hard to get better. Long, constant process, but it's a really mental game. Good for the mind exercise. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Good morning everyone. It is way too early to have a camera in my face as you can see. I'm yet to press my um, sleep off but we're up this morning for a really great cause. This year we're running, really it's a race to end domestic violence against women and girls and the proceeds go to the BPW shelter which is a safe house and a shelter and provides a a real comfort to a lot of people, you know, every single person in the world deserves to live a life free of violence. It is a right, it is a human right. So, um, very often, you know, we shy away in this part of the world from hard things to talk about. And, and domestic violence is a hard thing to talk about because it is like, a, it is incomprehensible to me. Like, it is something that we, we abhor all violence. And um, particularly this violence now against a more vulnerable section of your population. I remember seeing a, a poster once um, that said if you want to say something and you can't because it's inappropriate or if you, if you want to say something around women and you think it's inappropriate, it's just inappropriate. In other words, women and men, there's no separation. We're, you know, it's one community. We, we really require and each other to function and these things. So it's everyone's, it's not just a women's issue. It's not certainly not just a men's issue. It is all of our issue uh, and we want to end it. So we are going to take a cool 5K. See, it's a good turnout, really pleased. Amazing, the people coming out wearing purple or yellow. And uh, yeah, we're racing to end violence against women and girls. Magic, magic, magic. <laughs> I remember when I was in London, I went to apply to become a Sky Sports presenter. Um, I got, there were, I think, 114 people, and I got in the last four. And we were doing it live, practicing like you were in the Sky Sports seats, and you had the people talking in your ear, and you were throwing to news stories. And of course, I was doing all that while thinking about my accent and clicking my vowels. And at the end of it, the producer called me into one on one with her, and she said, I could actually listen to you read from a phone book. A phone book. I love your tone. I love everything about you. You, sound, you remind me of Michael Holding, a female Michael Holding, all these things. And she says, but it's a sports channel, and you're female, and you're foreign. And I think it would be too much for our audience, too much of a jump. So the, the realization that no matter how good I was, the mere fact of what I was would keep me away from jobs was a challenge. I overcame that bad boy by coming back to Bridgetown City where I am mainstream. Get me? <laughs>